Hello and welcome to another video. A few days ago I was lucky to get the Pinx Industries LoRa Gateway. This is a really tiny LoRaWAN 8 channel gateway which can be easily connected to the Pinx network. It is also possible to connect it to other network backends. The gateway is powered by 5V using USB 3.0 connector. It also seems that it could be powered by 230 volts, but I did not get the 230 volts wall plug adapter. More on that in the tear down later. The gateway connects to the internet with a 2.4 GHz Wi Fi. To configure it, you have to press setup button for 10 seconds. Then the blinking red LED means that the gateway has created Wi Fi access point which you can connect and set your Wi Fi SSID and credentials. The password for configuration access point is on the label on the back of the device. After configuration, the device resets, and when the status LED turns to steady green, it's up and running. Now log in to the Things Network and register a new gateway. You have to select the legacy packet forwarder and use your MAC address which is under the QR code on the back sticker. You need to add FFFE letters after the six characters in the MAC address to create your gateway EUI code. The gateway is immediately discovered. Let's try to send a message using Big Clown LoRa Climate Monitor. First I built the climate monitor and connect it over USB to flash the code. Then in the Biclown playground, in the firmware section, I flash the LoRa climate monitor firmware. The LoRa module needs to be configured by AD commands, so I set up the OTAA credentials over serial port and call the join command. The $80 status command will show me the climate data and $80 sent sends the data immediately. And the data is received perfectly fine and thanks to custom packet decoder which is written in JavaScript I can see the decoded data clearly. I've just noticed a little odd behavior. The green LED starts to blink quickly around once a minute. According to the documentation it means it's establishing a connection to LNS whatever it is or configuring the radio. During that time it receives uh, the LoRa packet, but it didn't sense it in Im immediately to the backend. After the green LED is steady again, the packet appears in a backend, but a few seconds later. I'm not sure this is normal behavior, because uh, when the green LED is steady, the transmitted LoRa packets appear in the backend immediately. Now let's look a deeper. You remove the grey top and bottom cover. Then use the T4 Torx to unscrew two screws. It took me a little while to get inside. Uh, there are two plastic tabs on each side of the package. Inside there are two PCBs. The one on the back is a power supply module with 100 to 240 volt input and 5 volt 2 amps output. The main PCB has some wireless module with uh, quite a big heatsink. It could be an application processor or a LoRa radio backend. It is using mini PCIe connector, but I'm not sure it is possible to connect it to the, this module directly to your computer. I'll keep that to someone else. The mini PCIe module has thermal conductive compound to get the heat away. And as you can see, uh, those metal covers are not soldered, so let's take a look what's inside of them. I've heard that uh, this device should use ESP32, but it really uses just all the one ESP8266. Next to the MCU you can see windbound flash, and the third chip is the TCA9534A, which is I2C input-output expander. Most probably for buttons, LEDs and some other slow GPIOs. So thanks for watching. Subscribing keeps me motivated in creating more videos like these. If you have ideas for other topics, write them in the comments below. 
and see you next time.